a large number of European travelers from myriad backgrounds visited India during the rule of the Mughal emperors. Aristocrats, priests and merchants traversed the length and breadth of the country and left impressions that are absorbing and sometimes insightful as well. Some of these accounts have been important sources for scholars studying the history of the period. Some remain as well-crafted narratives, a brilliant amalgamation of fact and fiction that recreates medieval India in all its color and romance. In this particular lecture today, I shall be speaking on the European sources for the study of the history of the Mughals in India. The European sources may be divided broadly into two kinds. One is the accounts of the foreign travelers and the other the correspondences of the European companies in India. Now among the foreign travelers, there were different kinds of travelers who had come to India from the late 16th to the end of the 18th century, which we'll see today. And they had written in different languages, including English, uh, French, Dutch, Italian, even German and Russian. The accounts of the foreign travelers could be divided again into various kinds depending on the nature of their writings. The first one, which is the most numerous one, is the account which we call descriptive. The second one is analytical. The third one we might say the memoirs or the diaries, sometimes personal letters. The fourth one is the Jesuit letters or Jesuit sources, the church history mainly. Among the descriptives, the first one that is important to us is written by Ralph Fitch, who came to India between 1583 and 1591. His account is important in the sense that he called some of the Indian cities as Moor city, perhaps being influenced by the cities of the Middle East, Baghdad or such Muslim city. Fitch is more or less accurate. He traveled widely, both uh, in, in the river boats as well as uh, on the land and he had given a good description of India, not a very flourishing India though. The second kind are three uh, French writers, Tavernier, Bernier and Thévenot. Among this Bernier we shall see a little bit later separately because his one is the only analytical writing on Mughal India. Tavernier is more or less is not a writer. He did not write it. It was written by a court historian under the order of Louis XIV and it is not very clear when did he come roughly from 1646 and when did he go back approximately assumed to be 1668. He came six times. He was not an ordinary traveler. He was a jeweler and he came to sell jewels which he did with a large profit to many nobles including Shasta Khan, one of the important nobles of the Mughal court. Now, Tavernier's writing is partly memoir and partly descriptive. He has given descriptions, but as I have said, it was not written by him and therefore it is not always very accurate. Thévenot, on the other hand, 
is a better writer, given a very good desc description. And the importance of Thevno lies in the fact that he has given the administration of the Mughals of the towns in India, who are the officials of the towns in India, what are their functions, what did they do, etc., etc. Now, that way he is a little bit different, but it is still a descriptive one. The one that uh, came during the early years of Jahangir was Pilsart, a Belgian one, who wrote on Agra. He said there were five story buildings and so on. Everybody used to eat ghee, that is what he said. And he has given also the record amount of money, which is 10 crore of rupees, left behind by Akbar apart from jewels, etc. There were some other travellers apart from these three, who did not tour the whole of the Mughal Empire. They toured only certain provinces. One may say about John Marshall in the 1670s, was an Englishman who came to Bengal and Patna and who wrote about the disastrous famine at Patna, the description, terrible description of the famine in those days. There was another one, Thomas Bowery, once again an Englishman, who came to Bengal and Orissa and wrote about the flourishing condition of Bengal and Orissa during the 1680s. Similarly, in Western India, we find two travellers, uh, John Fryer and John Ovington in the 1680s, who had been to Surat and other parts of Gujarat and wrote about this. Their view was, which has not been accepted by the historians, that the Muslim merchants were living in style and the Hindu merchants were living in uh, cottages in one room along with their animals. The reason is, as they said, that the Hindu merchants were afraid of the Mughal emperors. This has not been accepted by any historian so far and one may reject this kind of opinion straight away. The person who came in the early 18th century Gujarat, when Gujarat was slightly on the point of decline, was Dr. Alexander Hamilton who was in Gujarat for a number of years and wrote about the cities, their little bit of declining condition, etc. The person who wrote about uh, the entire India as such with details came around 1750 and stayed about 1780s, a German priest whose book has been translated in French and in Dutch. He wrote in Latin though, Joseph Tiffenthaler. Tiffenthaler's description, not always very accurate, but covering the whole of India, shows that India as of the Mughals was certainly on the point of decline. This view of Tiffenthaler has been corroborated by a French traveller, an aristocrat, Count of Modav who travelled in some portions of North and Eastern India between 1773 and 1776. Modav had shown the decline of Agra, for example, and he said that the reason of the decline was that uh, the Mughal court has gone away to Delhi. But that is not the only reason now, as the historian said, there are other deeper causes linking with the decline of the Mughal Empire. Modav at the same time had given the description and a warning to the French of the rise of the French power and the fall of the French power at the same time and the rise of the English power and the fall of the Mughal power at the same time. This kind of uh, contrast and the description as given by Count of Modav is very illuminating as such. He had given an excellent description of Calcutta, for example, or Chandanagar in those days, which was in rapid decline in his view.
apart from the descriptive accounts of the foreign travelers, we have the writings of the Jesuit priests, mostly letters written in Latin, but now translated into English. One of the earliest of these to the Mughal court was Father Montserrat. Montserrat and his companions, there were four Jesuit teams who came in succession to the court of the Mughals in Fatehpur Sikri and in Agra. They always thought that they are going to get the conversion of Prince Salim, the Jahangir or uh, son of Akbar. And their writings all the time uh, have this kind of hope that not only the ordinary people will be converted, but the princes will be converted at the same time. So there is a kind of a bias in their writings. They are always looking at good and evil from that point of view. Apart from these writers, there are certain others who had been to other parts of India. For example, in early 17th century Bengal, we have the very rare letters, which is a rare source, of the Jesuit writers from eastern part of Bengal, Jesor, Sripur, Bakla, Sonargaon, etc. And the bias remains the same. They wanted the conversion of the princess. As a matter of fact, this was the period, late uh, 16th and early 17th century, when Akbar was allowing the Christian some kind of latitude. He had allowed them to build churches. He had even allowed them to make conversions. So the priests were taking advantage of this. And uh, the result was that there was a backlash after some time, at least in Jesuit we know. The Muslims got very angry, the Afghan soldiers got very angry and there was a riot and the Christian priests, some of the Christian priests were killed and some of them are imprisoned and uh, th this kind of thing continued in other parts of the empire, sometimes without riot but more or less with the same result. So apart from their writings, there were certain other priests who came even after that. Uh, their writings are not very important. We have some of these but these are not very important to us. European travellers came to Mughal India between the late 16th and late 18th centuries. European accounts about Mughal India can be roughly divided into two categories, accounts of foreign travellers and correspondences of European companies in India. A large part of the travellers' accounts are descriptive in nature. An important descriptive account is that of the British traveller, Ralph Fitch. Fitch travelled extensively in India, giving detailed descriptions and often labelling Indian cities as Moor cities. French writers Tavernier, Bernier and Thévenot have written extensive accounts of their travels in India. Tavernier's account is partly descriptive and partly a memoir. Thevno has given an account of Mughal administration in the towns. Among other travellers who came to India and wrote about it are John Marshall, Thomas Bowery, John Fryer and John Ovington. The Jesuits first visited India in the 16th century and met Akbar. They have also written accounts of their travels in India and around the theme of proselytization. The memoirs of Sir Thomas Rowe, who came to India during the rule of Jahangir, are an important source of Mughal history. The third type is the memoirs, which we call the diaries, even some personal letters, which are very few. The diary, one of the earliest who wrote diaries was Thomas Rowe. Thomas Rowe came to the court of the Mughals in around 16, 16, 17 during the time of Jahangir. And he wanted 
claimed himself as an ambassador of the British Queen then. And he wanted to establish the English company at Surat, a permission to have it, which was opposed by the Portuguese tooth and nail. And he had given a very description of the politics of the court that was going on around this kind of uh, demand for the permission. Finally, he got it and the English were established there in Surat. And he accompanied the Mughal emperor in different places, including uh, Mandu, which was then coming up. And it was his best description as we think it. Apart from Thomas Rowe, there were two others who had lived long enough in India. One is a Frenchman, Francois Martin, who came around 1668 and died at Pondicherry as the first Governor General of the French in 1706. He had written a diaries, one not one, several diaries, which had been now been published in French, apart from his voluminous letters to the company. He was a company official. And he had shown how the French power had been established in India, or the history of the French establishment in India. Along with that, he had shown the attitude of the uh, Mughal and state as such, other states uh, like the Marathas, the officials, Maratha officials and the Mughal officials, the corruption that was reigning and so on, so forth, the commodities which were available, the kind of trade that is possible and so on. The third one who wrote uh, such kind of memoir, which is a little bit different from that of Francois Martin, was Nikolai Manucci. Nikolai Manucci, a, end of 17th, died in 1706, perhaps at Pondicherry also. He came at the age of 12 and stayed here. The uh, writings of Manucci had been found in four different languages, which had raised some doubts, because if he had come at the age of 12, how can he learn four different European languages? But in any case, Arvin has done the edition in three volumes. And Manuchi was a uh, person who had done almost all kinds of jobs, from goldsmith to gunner. He was a gunner of Dharashuko, goldsmith to gunner, then a physician. He was a physician at Lahore. He used to sit in the market and people used to come to him and uh, then he fled to Goa for obviously for different reasons and then uh, so many other things that he had done. He was a close friend of Martin at the same time. Nikolai Manucci's memoirs full of rumors as well as stories of the ghosts which are there according to him in certain areas. The other type, the analytic type, is that of François Barnier, which we'd see separately. Now, all these accounts of the foreign travelers, they have certain features in common. One feature, which could be seen in many of the cases, is that they had come via the Middle East, either from Mokha or from other places by ship, which Barnier did, for example, or by overland route, as Tavernier did, for example. And they were influenced or impressed by what they saw in the Middle Eastern cities. And therefore, they were looking the same kind of cities with the minarets and minars and mosques, hammams and masjids, madrasas, etc. And they were thinking that this is the same kind of a city, same kind of civilization. As a matter of fact, as we would see later, that Barnier made the same kind of a statement. So one uh, problem remains, one feature remains rather, that they were very much influenced or impressed by what had happened in the Middle East. The second thing is that most of these travelers had taken the big routes, going into the towns, 
very few had gone into the villages, absolutely rare. And therefore, there is particularly no reference to peasants in the villages, what kind of uh, agriculture, what kind of life they were leading and so on and so forth, their houses, their uh, utensils, their food, these are not uh, told to us by these travelers. Now, in looking at the cities, what is important to us is that they were always searching for the European city or the uh, circular city of the Middle East. In the European city, they were looking for straight avenues, broad straight streets, regular streets, blocks of houses well divided, markets well divided and so on and so forth which they do not find in India. And therefore, they say that Indians do not have cities, they have overgrown villages. It is the same thing some of them said regarding the Middle East, they are saying the same thing regarding these Indian cities. The third feature of the accounts of the European travellers is a question that what are their sources? Because most of the travellers, excepting two or three, they did not know Persian, which was the lingua franca in those days of the Mughal court. Barnier claimed that he knew Persian, which is a little bit doubtful, but others did not even claim that. So, what are their sources? For example, they relied on bazaar gossips and rumors. One Italian traveler, Anonymous, who came around 1630, wrote at least 10 pages that Shah Jahan was sleeping with his with Jahanara, forgetting that Jahanara was the daughter, and said that the Mullahs had approved it. This was in 1630s. In the 1660s, we see that Bernier is repeating this almost the same story verbatim. And what was the source of Bernier? Bernier stated that he got it from a half caste Portuguese maid who had once worked in the harem of the Mughals. So, this is the uh, source. And naturally, on the basis of this source, they had written many inaccurate details. For example, most of them did not understand the relationship within the members of the royal family. And as I have said, somebody did not know that Jahanara was the daughter, somebody did not know that he was the father and this kind of thing continues. Fourthly. Many of these travellers wanted to show that the civilization of India was inferior to the civilization of Europe. European civilization that was then far superior in all its aspects, not only in urban life, they did not go into the rural life, so there was no, no point in telling that. But in military training in uh, cannons and guns and so on and so forth, which on account of the 17th century is hardly to be accepted. In the 18th century, this view could be accepted, but in the 17th century condition, this view cannot be accepted. Then these travellers excepting a uh, few like Francois Barnier who was not really a traveller, an official or Nikolai Manochi who was a traveller, excepting a few, very few of these people lived long enough in India, did not see most of the parts of the country, mostly had seen the Mughal court or some other provincial court and had written the, all their impressions on that. For example, they said that there is no law, which is not correct. There was uh, a law, Kanuni Aurangzeb was already there. 
there was law besides this there the judiciary was divided into two the hindus had their own and the muslims had their own and they had their own laws so the this fact they did not know of course there was no judiciary the only good thing they could find in judiciary was that it was very quick and one or two had said that a quick justice is better than a prolonged one which was even just justice but a quick justice is a much better one so th these are some of the points of the uh, accounts of the european travelers which should be kept in mind which should be borne in mind and we should therefore use the accounts of the european travelers with caution and certainly after uh, confirmation from certain other sources despite these shortcomings the historians all kinds of historians had used these accounts not all accounts but some of these accounts with care the reason is that they had written on certain areas which are not covered either by the persian sources or by the provincial literature of the times for example as i have said they had written on the towns for example thevno had written on the town officials of surat in this second half of the 17th century now we know surat we know that there were certain officials but he had given a very detailed description of their functions even the lowest chaprasi he was also there so this kind of uh, detailed information that they had given on certain aspects of life of india this is important to the historians that is number 1 number 2 most of these uh, travelers had gone from one place to another either by river or by land and some of them for example tavernier is one of those fitch is another francois martin is one, another they had given the description of the route for example in 1666 martin had gone from surat to masalipatnam overland and taking a route which is not the principal route because of the maratha problem now he has given a very description of what he had seen in the route so we have an idea of the condition of the countryside during that period another person who did it similar thing count of modav in 1773 76 he had traveled from patna to delhi overland and he had given the detailed references of the towns and the villages as well as the villagers and townsmen that he had met the kind of agriculture the technology used in the agriculture the kind of housing which are there the kind of trade that is being done the merchants and so on so forth all these details are given by these people so for certain aspects of life the accounts of the foreign travelers are invaluable provided they are confirmed in general from other sources european travelers came to mughal india between the late 16th and late 18th centuries european accounts about mughal india can be roughly divided into two categories accounts of foreign travelers and correspondences of european companies in india a large part of the travelers accounts are descriptive in nature an important descriptive account is that of the british traveler ralph fitch fitch traveled extensively in india giving detailed descriptions and often labeling indian cities as more cities french writers tavernier bernier and thevenot 
have written extensive accounts of their travels in India. Tavernier's account is partly descriptive and partly a memoir. Thevno has given an account of Mughal administration in the towns. Among other travellers who came to India and wrote about it are John Marshall, Thomas Bowery, John Fryer and John Ovington. The Jesuits first visited India in the 16th century and met Akbar. They have also written accounts of their travels in India and around the theme of proselytization. The memoirs of Sir Thomas Rowe, who came to India during the rule of Jahangir, are an important source of Mughal history. Thomas Rowe gave a detailed account of political and socio-economic situation of the times. Niccolo Manucci, an Italian traveller, came to India at the end of the 17th century. Manucci was a colourful character whose accounts were full of stories and gossip about the times. Among the analytical sources, the dominant one is of François Bernier, the French traveller. A large section of the European travellers have not stayed long enough in India to write a serious account and have largely depended on bazaar gossip.